Hello there, so today we'll be taking a look at this. So this is kind of like a mailbag, but it's not technically mail because this is a non-postal service carrier. I guess we'll go ahead and look inside. That's about it. Alright, so the item is inside this bubble wrap over here. Go ahead and open it up, and you have some seriously discolored tape. That tells us this is probably going to be a very old item. Yeah, it's yucky. And yeah, even the, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the bubble wrap itself is really yucky. And this is what we have. So this is an industrial grade drive-on module, 512 megabytes. Megabytes, that is. And it's made in Japan, something that's rare for recent electronics. We'll take a closer look at this right now. So, electrostatic sensitive devices do not open or handle except at a static free workstation. Pretty much says the same thing in Japanese as well. Okay, caution this product could be damaged or broken, I guess, by static electricity. Do not open until right before you're going to use it. When you're going to use it, be grounded to earth and you handle with caution or something like that. Alright, let's go ahead and open this up. Get this out of the way. What kind of tape is this? Whoa. It's paper. It's one of these paper sticker thingies. And here's the item itself. Alright, so it's a nice small little item with a jumper and a little connector over here for power, actually. This actually uses just a regular standard IDE interface, so... So the intent of this item is to be used as a substitute for a hard drive. And as the name... well, it's not the name, but as it says, it's industrial grade. I suppose that implies that this could be used in environments where hard drives would be really suitable, like somewhere where you get lots of vibration or lots of heat maybe, or cold, or maybe harsh environments that you probably don't want to use hard drives in. So it's a real small module, as you can tell. Let me get a hard drive to compare this with. So for the purpose of comparison, I just brought out a three and a half inch SATA hard drive. And as you can see, this module is quite a bit smaller and obviously gonna be quite a bit lighter as well. So this is basically what we call today a solid state drive or SSD. It's just a bunch of flash memory chips inside that is used as storage rather than having a spinning iron disc inside that has magnetic things that can record data. So it doesn't have any moving parts. Because of that, it's robust enough to be used in environments which hard drives wouldn't be well suited for. A really good use for a module like this is to use an older system which didn't support really large hard drives. For example, this is a 512 megabyte, basically what would look like a hard disk, so many IDE controllers, which didn't support more than 538 megabytes or somewhere around there, should be able to cope with one of these things. And since I have an old IBM PC system, I might be able to actually use this in that machine. Anyway, I thought this would come in handy for use in older systems. So as with any other kind of IDE device, this also has a little jumper that can be used to select between a master or a slave configuration. So it's this little jumper over here. And what's a little bit, or actually quite a bit odd about this, is that it does not come with a regular power connector that you would see on SATA devices, like that Molex connector. So probably to save space, considering how small this package is, they opted to use some kind of connector here that I'm not sure if I have a um, proper connector for. I'm gonna have to take a look and see if I actually have this. So yeah, I looked around and I really couldn't find a connector that would actually fit into this connector, well jack or whatever you call it. So I'm gonna have to go to Akihabara and find one that would fit exactly this thing. I'm not sure exactly what it is, so I'm gonna have to look up and make a good guess of what this is. And also, as you can tell, this is a three-pin connector, so it's not exactly like those Molex connectors which have a 4-pin connector, which has both a 5-volt and a 12-volt input. Actually, I was able to find a data sheet for a device, which is exactly like this, or something similar enough to it, so it should work properly. 
um, which actually has the pinouts for these. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so let's go ahead and try to find that SSD. So there's a few links that are available here. Let's go ahead and try this one. And what we find is that, yeah, we can still buy this new and there's like a link to this PDF. But if you try to look at it, it goes to this site that says we've closed our homepage down. Oh well, so we can't really quite find the information that we want. So since this is apparently a SSD that's being used by other people that are trying to maintain old hardware and finding substitute hardware to use them with, I found that looking for people that are doing exactly that got me to some more useful information. So this is one page I found where they are trying to maintain their PC-98, which is basically an NEC um, series of computers, the PC-9800 series, which have been pretty popular in Japan in the early 80s up until probably around the 2000s, and there's people that like to maintain these old hardware, and in one way they're doing that is actually using this precise model. So it actually was mentioned here, DMI 512D MDG, and they talk about how this, oh okay, the electrical connector is a ZH connector. So this is a JST ZH connector that's being used for the power connector of the drive. And they happen to have the pinouts for that connector. And it says that P1 is a plus five volt, P2 is ground, and three is ground as well. And it says that the specs are available on the official website, but it's already been closed, so we can use the Wayback Machine to get information about that particular SSD. So looking at it, here's the spec sheet, and, it, and the one I actually have is this 40 pin drive. And where can I get the other information? I think it, yeah, so it's actually this one, the DMI 512 MDG. It's a 40 pin form factor drive, and let's see. Where's the pinouts? Oh, they actually have an exact pinout, including the ID connector and this power connector as well. And just as the information in the previous page says, P1 is VCC, which is plus five volts, and P2 and P3 are grounds. So with this information, we should be able to make a power connector to power up the SSD. Unfortunately, I don't have the proper equipment, basically just how to connect power to this in order to do any test drive of this solid state drive. So in a future video, I'll actually go ahead and make a cable that would be able to connect to this drive and try it out to see if it actually works. So that pretty much concludes today's video. I hope you found this video interesting. If you liked it, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments, please leave them down in this comment section and I'll answer them to the best of my knowledge. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.